Hi, this is Dave of JavaCodeJunkie.com and welcome back to another JavaFX tutorial. In this video, we're going to look at the JavaFX scroll pane. I'm going to cover the following topics. What is a scroll pane? How do we create a scroll pane? And then we'll look at some of the more common methods of the scroll pane class. So enough talk, let's get to the code. So what is a scroll pane? Scroll pane is a JavaFX control that provides a clipped viewport of its contents, and you can scroll using something called panning, whereby you click and hold the mouse and you move the content of the scroll pane around, or you can use scroll bars to scroll vertically and or horizontally. The scroll pane, you would think being a pane, is similar to the layout pane classes. And if you think that, you'd be mistaken. The scroll pane is not a layout pane. It descends from the control class, whereas all of the layout panes in JavaFX descend from the pane class. The scroll pane can contain a single element, and that element has to descend from the node class. It can be a single component, such as a button or a label or a combo box or a table view or any of the other UI components, or it can be one of the layout panes, such as a border pane, grid pane, or anchor pane, that can contain a whole host of other user interface components. So I've created our standard JavaFX project, so let's go ahead and create a new scroll pane. And we do that the same way we would create any other object in JavaFX. Scroll pane, scroll pane equals new scroll pane. And we'll add that to our root pane, which is a border pane layout. So I'm going to add it to the center of the border pane. Now let's run that and see what it looks like. So there is a scroll pane on the screen. We just can't see it. We have not added any content to the scroll pane and we haven't set the scroll bar display policies. So let's first add something to the scroll pane. Now I've taken the liberty of downloading an image called Earth and I'll just show you that really quickly. It's a picture of the Earth with the moon in the background and you can see that we have an image that's wrapped in a scrollable area. Now this essentially is what a scroll pane is. It allows us to have something that's bigger than the viewport that we can see on the screen, but we can move it around by using the scroll bars and we can see all of that content, a portion at a time based on the size of the viewport. So what I'm going to do is just load that image into the scroll pane. I've created a method that will load this image into an image view component, and I'm going to then add that image view component to the scroll pane. So scroll pane dot set content get image. Let's run it again. And now we see that we have the image. We'll see the scroll bars on the right and on the bottom that allow us to move around and see the rest of the image just as I showed you inside of Eclipse just a moment ago. But at this point we actually have to use the scroll bars or the increment and the decrement buttons that are part of the scroll bar in order to see the rest of the content. So let's look at what we need to do in order to make that panable. So we'll say scroll pane dot set panable to true. And we'll run and we'll see what we can do with that. So we still get the same image. We still get the same scroll bars on the right and the bottom of the scroll pane itself. And now if we click and hold, we'll see that the cursor turns into the crossed arrows and that allows us to, to move the contents of the scroll pane around. So we can move up or down and left and right without having to use the scroll bars themselves. And now I'm going to show you how to set the scroll bar display policy. When you're using 
a scroll pane. You may not always want the scroll bars to display. We have the ability to display them sometimes, as in only when they're necessary, always, and never. So for example, we could set them to never and set panable to true and force the user of our program to always move them around with the mouse. Or we can set panable to true to enable panning, but also set the scroll bars to display either always or as necessary so that we give them the ability to also see the rest of the contents of the scroll pane by using the scroll bars themselves. So let's set the scroll bar display policy. Scroll pane dot set horizontal policy and it's scroll bar policy dot and as I mentioned, it's always as needed or never. So always means they would, as you might expect, always show. As needed is only when the width of the contents of the scroll pane exceed the current scroll pane viewport would they ever show up. And it's the same for the vertical scroll bars. Let's put them as needed and we'll do the same for the vertical scroll bar. And let's run the program. We've set an 800 by 600 width and height on our scene, and that controls the initial width and height of our viewport. But if we were to change the size of the viewport, remembering that the scroll bar policy is as needed, once we get to the point where the height of the contents is less than the height of the scroll pane, the vertical scroll bar is no longer necessary in order to display the entire contents, so it disappears because it's only supposed to be there as needed, would be the same for the horizontal. If we expand the horizontal to the point where that scroll bar is no longer necessary, it also disappears. In this video tutorial, we learned about the JavaFX scroll pane. If you enjoyed the video and would like to help me build this channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.